Welcome back to the Writer's Room for Run Radio. My name's Trina Wilcox and our guest today, Chris Kepler. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> so I love reading your profile because it sounds so fun. You're into audiobook narration, voice acting, which I am so, I want to do that more one of these days right now. Book narration is as far as I've gotten, so I'm hoping. <laughs> one day. So I want to hear about that. I want to talk about your podcast, your writing process, because I have a feeling you probably do a lot of writing for your work, your voice work. So tell me all about it. Yes. Uh (laughs) I'm, um, I do. Yeah. Right. In fact, that's how I got my podcast started. Um, I was writing funny stories about life and befuddlement, uh, my, about my life and befuddlement. (laughs) (laughs) And um, I just have a real fascination with the funny of the mundane. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so, um, but I found that I was just starting out writing, especially funny stuff then. And so I found it hard to keep up with um, writing that much to keep, you know, to do a weekly podcast. It's, it's a lot. That's, that's a lot of writing. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Even for just five or 10 minutes, that's a lot of writing. So, um, so I started um, uh, asking people, bloggers that I knew whose writings I appreciated if I could narrate, and they were thrilled for the most part. Um, and then I've, I've moved on to uh, writers on medium.com and so just fantastic writers, but you're never going to hear those short stories in audio. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So that's that's how I got started, started with a podcast. And then it moved on to my uh, collaborating with writers to get their, their short, funny short stories into audio. When you first started out and trying to get all of that content, how did you keep track of it? Did you do little notes here and there, or were you just good at pulling it out of your, out of memory? Um, just pulling it out of memory. Yeah. I write from um, I use all my experiences a lot when I write, uh, not only when I write funny stuff of, you know, what I run into when I walk the dogs every day, um, you know, we've been attacked by crows. <laughs> Those we've are watched, we've, birds. Yeah, we've watched a crow trying to crack nuts. <laughs> Twice, you know, they're up on the power line and all of a sudden it was walk. It's like, what was that noise? Walk. Oh, it's a crow. And they were throwing, and I do mean throwing them hard onto the street below. (laughs) Maybe they picked you out to be friends because I say, I've read that they are very, they pick people out and they want to exchange and they'll bring you gifts. Maybe you should try feeding them and see what happens. Uh, Yeah, the only gifts they brought is dead birds and stuff like that. Rude. (laughs) Rude. I know. Yeah. Even, you know, I couldn't pull into the driveway one day because. There was a crow eating a dead bird. <laughs> and it was like, hello, I'm having dinner here. Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> so when you're trying to get that information, do you feel pressure to try to make it funny? Or will you pr- feel like it pretty much came natural for you to find the funny fun in it? Um, I, I seem to be pretty good at finding the funny. Okay. Yeah. Um, that's I've always had a thing for comedy. I haven't done a lot of comedy films as an actor. Uh, I have done a lot of comedy on stage as okay. an actor. And, and I always enjoy that. And it's, it's always, how do you connect with people and uh, not make it too over the top? Mm-hmm. You know, I, I find that comedy is, there's a lot of subtle in comedy. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, and if you try to push it, it's not funny. Never. But if who you are, stay subtle, it's, yeah. <laughs> who are some of your favorites when it comes to comedy? Oh, George Carlin. Okay. <laughs> he was fantastic. Um, I'll, um, any of the, uh, Eric Idle, the, okay. you know, British um let's see uh current um like amy poehler um and 
Yeah, a, a lot of SNL. I I don't watch SNL a lot anymore, uh, but I I some of the stuff they do is just great. Great yeah. stuff. Yeah. yeah. So tell me about your your voice acting and your book narration. How you kind of first decided you were going to try that or even get into that. Well, you know, I was looking for voice acting gigs, mm -hmm. and um, I replied to a, you know, somebody wanted an audio book made um, of a home canning guide, <laughs> and my voice lends itself to health and fitness because I have a bit of a Martha Stewart sound or I can get easily into a Martha Stewart sound. Mm -hmm. uh, I have that caring sound, mm -hmm. um, spirituality, kids stuff, uh, comedy. Um, I, uh, there aren't a lot of comedy audiobooks that I found to even audition for. Um, yeah. But um, so so, and of course, you know, it's like, oh, I'll audition for this. And of course they liked it. And so that's how I got my first. And it was like, oh, well, I can book audiobook work. Mm -hmm. um, it was a bit of a learning curve. Um, uh, audiobooks are huge projects. There's so much they work. Are. So yes. much work. So, um, and then... And I just kept going. I replied to a, and this was the big one. I booked a, um, again, another, you know, author on a freelance site looking for a narrator for their uh, Wicca books. I had never, yeah. I didn't know anything about Wicca. <laughs> uh -huh. But I've since done a lot of, I think I narrated over, I think it's 10 to 20 of the books. And, uh, and just really enjoyed that and learned a lot. Um, as I was doing that. And then I've, I've done a lot of um, anything spirituality related, um, done some tarot books. Okay. Um, and the, <laughs> the one that was really interesting was I narrated a book on self hypnosis. <laughs> Okay. okay. <laughs> Just picturing. <laughs> Did you zone yourself out or something? Did you hypnotize yourself in the process? Not that I know of. Okay. But I did wonder, <laughs> am I going to hypnotize any of the reading, you know, the listeners? Right. <laughs> uh, because it, it turns out, yeah, self-hypnosis is a very um you can hypnotize yourself without realizing you've hypnotized yourself interesting yes yeah so maybe i did and i didn't know <laughs> wow that, that would be interesting to follow up on you might need to get some uh tips and tricks on the follow-up of that yeah it's out there on audible it's actually a very popular book it's selling several copies a month cool. right now well that's very cool yeah yeah so how long have you been doing all of this has this been your first and only career path or have you changed gears in the midst of life Oh gosh, I I was in uh, corporate purchasing for oh. twenty some years. Actually, mm -hmm. I kind of enjoyed the job, um, but I I stayed in. You know, I went back. I started as a singer, and after junior college, I got tired of singing in choir because mm -hmm. that's what I was doing. I was singing in choir. It's like. You know, it's just boring standing up there in a black dress squished with a bunch of other people. It's like, okay. And then in my 30s, I decided to go back, take some singing lessons. And a blind date took me to a Gilbert and Sullivan production. And <laughs> uh, the, the date didn't go much of anywhere, but it said on the program, oh, we're looking for chorus members. And so but I, I got a job. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, that worked out very well. It sounds like yeah, so best date like, ever. Yes, yeah, so I was a fairy and I had wings and a wand. And it's like, hey, this is a lot more fun than standing around in a black dress. No kidding. <laughs> very cool. Yeah. And so then it was, I want to be at the front of the stage. <laughs> so then I got into acting and then it's like, well, singing and acting go really well together as voice acting. And so then I, somebody said, oh, you should try voice acting. So I took some classes and it's like, no, oh, I love this. It's like combines my singing and my acting. 
And so, because I've been an actor for over 20 years now, and I got into voice acting about 10 years ago. Cool. And just, just love it because I get to, you know, I get to use lots of my skills in front of the mic. So when I get to be lots of different characters and uh, I've learned a lot of things, narrating audiobooks, I've learned self-hypnosis, I've learned about <laughs> Wicca. <I've> learned... <laughs> I, one of my favorite things to narrate are kids books because they are easier usually to turn around and you yep. get to play with the voices if there are some characters you kind of yes. those are really fun for me what do you yep. what are some of your favorite things to narrate you know one of my most challenging projects was a children's audiobook okay called a to z animals okay oh and it had 10 different animal voices and she wanted a separate distinct voice for oh. each animal. And you know, what the heck does an anteater sound like? <laughs> you tell me. <laughs> <laughs> it's got a long tongue so it talks like that. <laughs> so you had to get really creative on that. I had to get really creative. Yeah. Yeah. So that was, that was one of the biggest challenges. And, and with the Wicca books, Actually, it was um, uh, Old Irish. Oh. Old Irish looks nothing like it's pronounced. Nothing like it's pronounced. You know, if you're used to just plain old American English, it's like, what? <laughs> yeah, that's that's not easy. I, I do no. a lot of word lookups listening to the <laughs> pronunciation yeah. over and over uh, and yeah, over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep, yeah, yeah. That's another thing about audiobooks too, and well, just voiceover in general. Um, it's like, oh, I've been pronouncing that word wrong since forever. <laughs> right, right. Or you'll read it, and then they, and then they have the author has wanted you to pronounce it a different way, or it's different in their yes. mind. So you're like, oh, well, yes. <laughs> that would have been helpful. Several pages uh, back. <laughs> yes. So yes. tell me about a little bit of your podcast. If you even have a little piece you wanted to share, like if someone tunes in, because here's what's different about your podcast. Like you were saying, it takes a while. You're the only person on there. You don't have a guest to play yep. off of or to talk to. You're kind of nope. basically, basically doing a nope. one woman show. Yes, I am. It's I call it a micro audio book. And my fans have called it bite-sized fun. <laughs> Ooh, I like it. um so yeah it's um wow uh yeah that's I'm looking for you know it's it's just fun it's something to say wow I didn't know that happened to other people too or it's wow I had no idea that would happen to someone <laughs> Have you ever had, do you have a memorable uh, feedback comment that really sticks out in your mind to one of your a response to one of your podcasts? Not, um, you know, I think it's just, you know, the bite-sized fun comes yeah. to mind. I would, you know, I would never think of that myself, but it's like, uh, let's see, what have I got coming up on the list? Um, let's see. Uh, um, okay. Uh, coming up soon will be my date smelled like my dad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Interesting start already. I'm intrigued. Tell me more. <laughs> uh, yeah. Cause you know, no one wants to make out with daddy. Online dating is fraught with fears. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Oh, extreme cost cutting tips from the cheapest person on earth. So that's, that's, that's uh, going to be coming out the end of this week. And, uh, let's see, it's out to, um, yeah. How to reuse paper towels over and over again. <laughs> hey, I'm all or for it. Mo see, um... <laughs> Money saving and good for the environment, right? Money saving and good for the environment. Yes. Um, yeah. And if you're so, doing online dating, you, there's a wealth of, I mean, <laughs> you should have a <laughs> plethora of content in that way. I, it's oh, rough out there, right? Yeah. 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 All right. Those, so, 
Tell me where we can go to hear a full blown podcast and get more information about your your skill set. <laughs> well, my podcast is Does This Happen to You? And it's on all the major platforms, iHeart, Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Yeah, yeah. Or, and if you want to hear more about all the different things, you can go to my website, www.chriskepler, that's K-R-I-S-K-E-P-P-E-L-E-R.com. <laughs> or you can just type my name in Google and my IMDB page will come up too. So <laughs> that, that's, that's pretty fun to have an IMDB page. Very cool. I wish you a lot more success and I hope you'll come back next time you have something else to share. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Ha, <laughs> ha,